Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop. Well, it's part of our midweek. It's actually early. It's Tuesday. It's about 1:30. Uh, any of you right now currently living in the Upper Northeast, uh, you know that we have a blizzard going on. We have a good old nor'easter. So, this is my request to all of you who are getting a day off from work. I know a lot of stuff is closed down. All right, please stay home with you and yours. It is awful outside. You know. I can tell you right now, it is blowing, it is howling outside. Visibility after 40, 30, 40 yards has gone out the front doors of the shop. Stay at home. Have a movie night, make some popcorn. Don't, don't risk your neck going out to get a pizza, though, okay? Be home, be with the family, be safe, all right? All right, on with the show. Well, I had a, uh, I had a subscriber right in uh, the other day. It's probably about over a week or two ago, but we're just getting to it, I'm sorry. They wanted to know how to make a digital signature. And they wanted to know how to basically put their John Hancock in the lower right hand corner. I guess they take uh, they take like round log flats, you know, they cut they cut wafers like Oreos, and they put some sort of decorative engraving on it, but they wanted to be able to put like an artist signature you'd see in the bottom right hand corner or left hand corner of a painting. So we're gonna show you how to do that, okay? I just need a little caffeine. Mm. All right. Well, first thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need a big old fat sharpie pen with a with a fine point on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fine point. Grab yourself a piece of plain white paper. Okay. There's my first name. Okay. Just for the sake of the example, that's my my horrifying doctor signature, just without the salary. Okay. Take it. Lay it on a flat surface. Now you can use a conventional point and click camera. A one shot. Uh, you can most certainly use your smartphone. In this case, I use my tablet. I've already taken this picture, but every all other cameras have a you know they have a camera function on them. Get your picture. Take more than one. Try not to use a flash if possible. You know I got plenty of uh, ambient light up here in the shop. Uh, but get a bunch of pictures. Take take a good six to ten pictures. You can download them off your camera or whatever device. Load them into your computer. All right. And then from there, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to basically run you through Inkscape. We're going to drop it into VCarve Pro. Real quickly, I'll show you how to note edit. Uh, we're going to basically take the best of, in this case, I got four signatures here. Feel free to write as many as you want. But like I said, use a big fat Sharpie with a fine tip. It's going to be easier. Trust me, it's going to be easier than using a real fine tip uh, pen or something like that. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you stay tuned. We'll be back. We'll run you through Inkscape, we'll drop it into VCarve Pro, and then we'll show you how to uh, put a digital signature in your work, okay? All right, everybody. Be safe, stay home, all right? All right. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. Well, we are back, and in light of last night's storm, I hope wherever any of you were, if you were in this, well, I hope you were home safe with you and yours, nice and warm feet up, hopefully bowl of popcorn and a movie with the family, okay? Because by God, that's what I set down to do. I do apologize. We meant to put the opening of this on last night. By the time I got down from the shop, the net was uh, the net was really kind of whacking out. It just it, it didn't want to connect, and so that's why uh, we didn't get it out last night, all right? All right, so anyways, here is the picture that I told you you can take with either a point-and-shoot camera your smartphone, or in my case, because I'm getting old and going blind, I use my big 10-inch tablet, uh, the camera function that's on that, okay? I took about six or eight pictures. I kept the two best. This one had a little too much grayscale in it. I opted to go with this one, okay? All righty. Well, the next program we open up is our Inkscape. You go into File, and click Open, and obviously there's the picture right there that you see. From here, we end up clicking on the Path uh, tab. We come down to Trace Bitmap. Alrighty, and I, I left the threshold right where it was just to see how it looked. Click on OK. Helps if I get it out of the box. I click on OK. I drag in the one that I need which is not that one. We delete that one and we take this photo right here 
of our, our wonderful John Hancock, and we drop it in the box. Close that out. File. Save as. Well, I've already got it in here, so save it however you, you choose. I, I saved it as, uh, as an EPS file, and there it is. It's already pre-existing, so we won't walk you through that, okay? Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a fresh copy of VCarve Pro. Uh, my job size and dimensions, I started just a little bit big. 12 by 12 is obviously larger than you're gonna you're gonna actually sign your name but nonetheless for the sake of the example it makes seeing things a little little easier for me okay we're gonna go in we're gonna open up our tool pass function now we're gonna come up here and we're gonna import vectors from a file there's our EPS file to wherever you save it your desktop your documents my pictures maybe you constructed a folder okay we're gonna open it up now, as we can see, it is a lot bigger than the work surface. Nonetheless, we're going to go to Transform Objects, Align Selected Objects. We're going to drop them dead center. Now, close this out. You're going to come down to Transform Objects, Set Selected Object Size. I am going to take the larger of these two numbers, and I am going to reset this one to 11.5 for my height, since my work area is 12 by 12. I'm going to apply it. Now everything fits. Click close, zoom in. Now I can already tell you the bottom one I did not like at all. So in edit objects, make sure you're in selection mode. Hold down your left mouse button, highlight it all, hit delete. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button again. I'm going to highlight everything. I am going to go to align selected objects again. I'm going to center it, close it out. Now, here is the indiscrepancies that you're going to see. You can see that my signature looks like a caveman with a piece of chalk, okay? Uh, I think I've seen better refrigerator drawings from, from children. So, But this is basically what we're going to work, all right? So I'm going to show you real quick, just a little bit. Go to your Edit Objects, your Node Edit, and click on it. you got nodes all over the place. Now, there's a couple different ways to delete out the nodes you don't want. One is you can go to a node, you can right click on your mouse and click delete, uh, click delete point, excuse me. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can hold down your left mouse button, you can highlight a bunch of them, hit, hit D on your keyboard, or you can independently, if you want to, hover over them and hit D on your keyboard. So on and so forth. You can work your bottom, in this case I would highlight a lot of them. When they're black, they're basically a straight solid point. Well, we want to work with curves here, so we want to smooth point all of these. You can adjust your uh, the tails on your nodes. I call them tails. They're probably called something else. We smooth things out. Now, what I will do is I've already got this rendered. Let me pull that file up for you. Here is one that is rendered. Okay, I have gone back through. Let me highlight all this. And we can see that the curves doesn't look like Morris code in here. It's clean. It's smooth. Well, we're going to throw a... Uh, I would do this or recommend to do this with a very, very steep bit. Uh, I use a three-fluted 60-degree bit. It works pretty good. Uh, adjust your feeds and speeds as necessary for your piece of equipment. I can't tell you what to run your feeds and speeds at because I don't know what piece of equipment you have. You may have a spindle, you may have a router, okay? Turn around and uh, calculate it. Close it. Let's pull up uh, Preview All Tool Pass. Oh, and it was already rendered anyways. But that is basically it. That's all there is to taking and, and rendering yourself your own digital signature and in this case for this gentleman who wants to attach it to his artwork at the bottom much like a painter would on a, on a beautiful painting okay well I hope this helped I hope you guys got a little something out of this and uh, I hope this tutorial wasn't too long okay everybody take care have a good week if you're out in this white stuff please drive safe get home safe to you and yours we've got the Sunday evening blog coming up which maybe Friday we'll give a shout out as to what this is uh, what it's gonna be because I have no idea at the moment okay Everyone, though, please be safe this week, and uh, I look forward to bringing you more this weekend.
Alrighty. Bye-bye.